Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here and taking the time. I've only got 10 minutes to explain uh, how we look at the electrical insulation system and uh, how the magnetic wire uh, gets into play there, what role it has, and how it can be uh, very helpful in optimizing the whole system. So 10 minutes is not a lot, so don't uh, be afraid. I only had, have three slides. I hope you get uh, the message that I want to bring to you today. And then uh, if you find anything of interest, any details you want to discuss, of course, I'm available after the talk or on our booth anytime. As Mr. Winter explained, I'm representing Schwerin Hasse, Electronaut, um, a magnetic wire manufacturer with the largest uh, site in Europe uh, with a capacity of 50,000 tons. So why am I saying this? It's a process industry, which means that um, hundreds of thousands of kilometers of wire have to be controlled um, at perfect uh, condition and equal quality, which is quite a task I want to talk uh, to you about. And of course, the second issue is, as you can see here, the whole system consists of quite a number of important components. And with our sister company, Synflex, uh, we are able to look at all of these components. And uh, so the topic of today, which the ZVE brought here, is very much in our interest. We think it's, it's not just, uh, it's, it's not a good way forward just to look at one, one component. Uh, you can optimize this, you can uh, put a, uh, some, some risk protection in, in one component, but in the end, you really want to look at the system. Um, now, within the system, and you see here the different components, uh, the winding wire, which I would like to concentrate on now, is um, probably one of the most important commercially wise, because as you know, copper is an expensive material. So you as a customer are looking at the magnetic wire uh, as a whole price. And although the, um, the, the, the cost of really fabricating the wire is uh, the lower part of the whole uh, component price. Uh, of course, the copper is, is quite expensive still today. So um, winding wires play an important cost role in your system. Um, the second issue, of course, is, OK, it is a conductor, as you know, but it also gives you the primary insulation. And the better the primary insulation, the easier you can work with the system, or the, the better you ensure uh, quality over, I don't know, uh, hundreds of thousands of parts uh, in your production. So it has a, also technologically, it has a, an important role, of course. Um, so winding wire manufacturing really is about the art. I, I think it is a kind of art. It is a kind of art in pro of producing hundreds of thousands of miles of wire reliably at the same level of quality, which uh, needs, of course, um, a very stable process condition right from the start and still also uh, a good quality control, preferably in line, uh, to make sure that each millimeter of hundreds of thousands of miles of wire uh, is in good condition and that you have the same quality over the whole length of wire. So that's, that's the task. And what I would like to talk to you about on the next two slides is uh, product improvement that has been done by our company, which gives you a really nice and innovative product today with significant advantages. And the second issue is that uh, I would like to give you the feel that we have our product and the production under control and how you can profit from this. Now, the first issue is what we call the SH. SH stands for our company, Schreyer Hasse, term 210 glide. Now, of course, uh, the term 210 is just a, let's say, normal temperature um, resistant uh, wire. But the glide already uh, gives you a hint on what it does. It glides perfectly. And as you can see here, I, I go to this, uh, to this slide here. This is the um, coefficient of friction of the wire, which has been lowered significantly. And also the uh, variation of the friction is very small. So what advantages do you get from this? This is the question. Um, you want to have, um, per first of all, you want to have a stable a gliding coefficient, because any deviation from a given uh, coefficient of friction in your machine will lead to maybe even a wire break 
will lead to uh, increased tension, which might elong el elongate the wire. So you really want to avoid any, any big variation on the gliding coefficient. And unfortunately, if I'm talking about a very high process control in magnetic wire manufacturing, the application today of lubricants on the wire is not so stable. So our idea was to put the gliding property into the uppermost layer of enamel on the wire, so we don't need additional lubricant. Uh, get rid of it. It also creates some dirt and so on, so we don't like it at all. And the advantage for you is that uh, you will have a much reduced coefficient of friction. This can lead to really significant improvements in the filling factor, for example, in the, in the slot, uh, to a higher uh, d density of power, to a higher efficiency. So you, you will probably find in your construction, in your design, a considerable improvement on the motor characteristics. Secondly, equally important, many winding machines today uh, um, are run at uh, lower speed uh, because you have a certain kind of friction and uh, you must not have uh, a, a too large tension on the wire. Otherwise, it will elongate and your special resistance, your specific resistance will increase. So you have to live with lower winding speeds. And this is a catastrophe because you have machines that are able from the mechanic and electronic design to run much faster. And what you need is to be cost effective and you want to have the machines running at optimum and highest speed. And you cannot do it because the wire is, uh, the friction of the wire is too, too large. So, you know, you really want to avoid this. You really want to have a uh, gliding wire. Um, so what we find is that um, apart from the product um, advantages that you will get, your process will be much faster. The efficiency of your machines will increase. And this is uh, directly a cost, cost point or cost saving point in your production. So very nice to achieve. Now, I'm not giving you any figures, but I'm telling you that uh, some winding machines today are run by only 50% of what they could be running at. OK, to increase the winding speed by the factor of two, this is a significant advantage you could achieve. Now, the second issue, as I told you, I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm advancing to the second topic. Maybe if you're not too familiar with the kind of production that we have, you wonder how we can ensure this same quality over such uh, uh, huge amounts, tons of wire or kilometers of wire. So um, I think uh, one important factor for this is that you really have a continuous monitoring of all factors that influence product uh, quality in your production. And this we have installed. We can uh, we ensure from incoming control over process parameters, over quality parameters taken in line 100%. We can ensure that you will get a 100% tested wire. And in case you want to discuss anything about the wire with us, we just need the spool number and we have all parameters available for discussion. Now this is of course very important for um, traceability, if you are forced to have full trans uh, traceability anyway, then this is, this is a must and uh, we can ensure that. But also I think uh, it is very important really to look at any, if, if needed, to look at any centimeter or millimeter of wire and really see what happens there. This gives you really the confidence that the quality of the wire is fine over that uh, huge length uh, that, you, that you will use in, in your product. And the heart of the whole system is a 100% control of the continuity, as we call it, or the number of weaknesses in the insulation. Um, uh, probably uh, you will agree that this is the most important property because what you hate most is that you have a short circuit somewhere in your system, uh, either being there right from the start or developing with time. So you really want to know how good your insulation is at any millimeter of the wire to see whether there is a weakness at all. And if there is a weakness, you want to know how much it is. So for this, you need a very specific equipment uh, to do this. 
continued, con uh, continuously. And uh, this is something I would like to give you the confidence that we do this. So any millimeter you, uh, of wire you get is quality controlled. And I think this is very important because if you want to have a high quality product, you really want to know uh, that each part of it is in perfect condition. So this is what uh, we can offer. And this is something uh, I wanted to explain what the challenges are from our uh, point of view. And now I move on to the next uh, two components. And I think at the end, we will try to marry the different components together and see how the system develops okay. and how to get an optimized system. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Lehrmann, for this introduction. Of course, the copper wire is probably the most important part of the system. But there are some other systems which make the insulation system in finally. And uh, the second presentation will come from Dr. Uh, from Mr. Nelgas from Pucaro, and he will give us some information on the requirements on combined flexible insulation materials. And in the end, we will see how all those parts will play together. Mr. Nelgas, stage is yours. So first of all, I would like to say hello to everybody who joined this meeting. Um, I'm, my name is Jörg Nelgas, and I'm responsible for the development at Pucaro Flexible Insulating Division. And um, we are located in Roycam and we are producing approximately 45,000 kilometers flexible insulating material per year. So just to give you a, just an overview about Pucaro. And today I would like to talk about the requirements on flexible insulating materials. The problem in this case is most of our flexible insulating materials are standardized already in the IEC standard 66 to 6. So I guess all of you, they are um, comparing the material with these standards. So when we have to want to change to another insulating material, it will bring up some problems. But when discussing all the requirements from our customers, one big issue from our customers is always to increase filling factor or to increase converting speed of the insulating material. And for the standard insulating material, we are limited due to the surface of Nomex, or for example, um, by DMD material, we are limited due to the coefficient of friction of the used resin, impregnating resin. So <clears throat> the differentiation of the flexible insulating materials with competitors is only done by additional features. So for the time being, we have pre-packed top coats used in, in combination with B-stage wires. Um, so you can avoid to have an additional trickling or impregnation process of the winding. And then we have some resin systems which are soft to improve the heat conductivity between the um, stator and the insulating material and respective the winding. So these are filled coatings which are available already and then the main issue and what I'm talking today is how to increase the filling factor and reduce the motor size by having the same output of the motor. So in this case um, we developed a new material recently, so the last two years, and we achieved an improvement in the coefficient of friction of our insulating material for NMN grades of 30% and for DMD grades of 50 up to 60%. And this will end up in a higher speed of automatically inserting machines. And this will allow you to increase the filling factor in the automatically inserting machines. <clears throat> yeah. As you all know, the filling factor in automatically winding is lower than in hand winding. So we want to achieve a similar filling factor also for automatically winding machines. <clears throat> and uh, properties we achieved with a top coat, which is a very, very thin co top coat, approximately two to five microns, is that we even improved by the um, Nomex material, the abrasion resistance, and um, this material, the, this top coat guarantees a high smoothness. That was the goal of the development. 
and so we have a better machinability of our product. <coughs> and especially when we are using um, automatically machines where we have the winding outside of the stator and then inserting the winding together with the slot closure, this is a very smooth process due to the new material. <coughs> and according to our first key customers who are using this material, they are able to increase the filling factor approximately 7 to 9%, depending on the frame size of the electrical motor. <coughs> there are already materials in the market which are also um, supposed to have an extra slippery surface. But this material using an additive based on fluorine, and this additive will always protect the twickling resin to adhere to the insulating material. In our case, our additive <coughs> will migrate into the coating layer again by heating up over 60 degrees, which is the common use temperature during twickling. So the twickling resin can easily adhere to our material and you get a really compact winding afterwards. <clears throat> so in the market available at this time are DMD and NMN materials with these special top coating. <clears throat> it's um, for laminate, NMN laminates, um, it doesn't matter if it's a 50 micron out lay outside layer or an 80 micron outside layer of economics and for all DMD grades. Oh. So <laughs> that's already what I want to say. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Nelkes, for this overview on what can be done on the isolating materials. It's also a part to improve the density of the coils and to increase the winding speed. And now, we, if there are any questions to Mr. Nelkes, please keep them to the discussion. And I would like to welcome Thomas Häusler from Stockmeyer Urisons. And he will give us uh, the view of the fluid insulation materials of the resigns, what you can improve, how, how you can improve your insulation systems by resigns. Welcome, Mr. Häusler. Dr. Winters, thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, after working since more than 25 years in the uh, formulation business of polyurethanes, also working together with uh, some companies, building up the machines and all the customers. Uh, I like to focus uh, how to save money and resources uh, by doing a proper work on uh, projects and also on communications between the customers, uh, the machine suppliers and also the uh, resin producers. And it's a small guideline for development, project planning, and processing. The blue, just, no, funktioniert nicht. Sorry, jetzt bin ich gerade mal rausgekommen. Wie komme ich? Ja, okay. So I will try to point manually. The small blue. Arrows just shows most of the communication which are doing uh, during the process. People talking together, and it's much more efficient to share all the information, to have the uh, most efficient um, possibility on uh, working on the process. At first, I want to introduce uh, the players in this uh, team of uh, the three parties. It's a resin. We have different kinds of resins, raw materials. We have epoxy, polyurethanes, and silicones. We have different kinds of curing profiles. We can have cold curing, we have hot curing, and also different properties on the uh, systems from soft materials up to hard materials. Uh, going to the customer who usually deals with nuts and bolts, Bulk materials like uh, poly uh, polyurethane or two component resins, they change their consistency and properties during the process. 
you have two bulk components uh, in the beginning and one cured material afterwards. And this has some uh, confusion sometimes to the customers for especially asking for uh, IMDS uh, entries when they ask for uh, the declaration for both components, resin and hardener. But in reality, what they have to do is declare the cured material. The material is a consumption material, so you have to buy bulks, that means kilos, and you receive parts with an uh, amount of pieces. The machine, also here, uh, the machine has to do two different uh, processes. You have the metering process and you have the mixing process. And for both are uh, different technologies available. We have gear pumps and piston pumps, also different kinds of mixing systems like uh, static mixers or uh, dynamic mixing heads. Uh, but all in common is that this machine is uh, built up, tailor-made for the process in combination with the uh, given uh, or chosen resin. The machine is um, investment for the company, so a little bit different to the consumption material. The developer and the producer are both two types of the processor. The developer at first is uh, interesting in the cured properties of the material. The producer or process engineer is more interested in the raw material properties. And the parts, they are uh, building or producing, they are different in terms of amount of resin. For example, insulators or bushings, uh, they contain a high amount of resin, and this resin gives the uh, mechanical properties of the whole part, <laughs> and the part is, a, we can say it's a construction part. For example, transformers containing a lot of uh, coils and also uh, resin. You see here that we have construction parts and also uh, housings. And the properties, which the, the core properties of the resin, are not so uh, in the uh, foreground uh, compared to the um, insulators. Electronic parts like drivers, sensors, and so on, they contain a lot of different substrates and the amount of resin usually is very low. And uh, in this case, the final properties of the material are more or less uh, defined by the um, uh, as other, other substrates, sorry. <laughs> if the process is running, sometimes you have to um, modify the process uh, due to uh, revision of the parts. And this can cause uh, some problems uh, during the uh, complete process. And it's better to ask the resin and machine supplier in advance before running a modification on the uh, process in the production line. Some uh, scientific background very important is the temperature, because increasing temperature is, has uh, influence uh, to the reactivity. It's the Arrhenius plot. That means on higher temperature, the material will cure in a faster time. Also, you have a decrease of the viscosity. That means the viscosity drops down. And this has influence to the uh, pressure because the pressure is a function of the uh, viscosity. And uh, for a good mixing quality, you need uh, constant pressure for the constant uh, quality. Uh, we're also dealing about the economic aspects. And there was a great scienti scientist to say, what's cost nothing, it's worth nothing. So, Please pay attention and invest in the project first, that savings money and resources later on in the production. So for the resume, 
Important is uh, sharing the information in, the, in any stage of the project. Keep close contact and communication between all parties who are involved in the project. Testing and trials in advance before finalizing the layout of the machine or the uh, parts one to producing. And even if you are running the process, uh, be aware that changing parameters can cause side effects, which can cause mixing uh, uh, failures and so on. And so it's more efficient to talk in advance uh, instead of doing some fireworks uh, afterwards. I guess this gives a little bit of uh, view how to work properly on the uh, production process in combination with the resin, customers, and the uh, machine supplier. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Häusler, and you. thank you, uh, Mr. Nalgas and Dr. Levermann. Yeah, you had shown that to build up a transformer or a motor, that's a complex system, and there are a lot of interactions between the different parts or of the transformer, even between the wiring, the isolation materials, and the processes. And what we prepared a little bit is to start up a discussion. So maybe we start with some questions from the reference to each other, but uh, the auditorium is also invited to have their questions to the speakers. So is there a question right now from your side? So please raise your hand. Don't hesitate. No. So we should start the discussion between yourself, because uh, normally all of you are with the same customer but it's not often that the customer is asking you together to bring up an optimized system. And that is the wish, I understand, of a lot of the companies involved here to make the best system for the customer. So who um, wants to start? Maybe I can start. I mean, um, we were talking about a high variety in the system, but uh, it already starts with a component. So maybe I can ask Mr. Häusler, on the resin side, uh, does it not mean to be customer specific, to be cost effective, to have an immensely large, huge variety of products in your portfolio? How, how do you deal with all the customer specific demands? Um, yes, it's, it's, it's sure you have uh, used a lot of different materials and uh, the, for a specific application, you had need a tailor-made uh, system for the uh, customer. And it's possible to make variations in the systems uh, in the lab of the uh, formulators uh, to adapt viscosity, adapt uh, hardness, and also reaction profiles. Does this answer it completely? <laughs> okay. More questions from you to your colleagues? That's why try to ask again uh, about the uh, test methods of uh, the uh, system that to support the uh, optimizing of the electric insulation systems. Uh, what kinds of test methods uh, do you uh, use as uh, physical ones or? Uh yeah, um, I think there's a, a large variety of test methods that you can apply and one thing as a component or system um, supplier that we can't do is really to, to use your products and to do the test you normally do. Like on a motor, you put it on a uh, motor proof um, uh, test equipment, test bench, apply the, the typical load to it that you uh, would have in the real application. So we can't do this, but there's a number, or quite a number actually, of test methods described either in the IEC standards, the IEEE standards, or uh, if you require UL, of course, then uh, some of the test met methods are described where you can use either, uh, where you can achieve either information about uh, compatibility, so whether all the components of an electrical insulation system uh, like each other, or whether, negatively speaking, they would influence each other. Um, typically, it's done by a sealed tube, so-called sealed tube test or CCT test. 
Uh, the other information you would normally like to get is uh, an information about the lifetime of your system um, or the temperature index, and this you want as early as possible in your development stage. So, um, okay, one, one thing again is to apply maybe the, the test methods that are dis described in any standards, but um, I, I personally think that, you know, you have, work, you have to work together with your customer to, to design the right test and to have uh, a, a much quicker information about uh, what the system will be achieved because you can't wait a year or so until you get a UL recognition or anything. So this is uh, very specific, but um, okay, um, the test equipment, the test procedures are the same. You need calibrated equipment, so uh, this is how you, how you would design those, those tests. Thank you. Yeah, I, would like, I would like I would like to address also a question to Dr. Lebermann, because well, our developments and the development of um, Schwering and Hasse are somehow connected. So um, up to which diameter of wires is this new feature, gliding feature, available? Okay, so I mean, we, we have a product range from what you call really thin wire, 0.05 millimeter, which is like hair diameter up to five or six millimeters. Theoretically, you can apply it uh, at any diameter. However, the, the effect I was describing in the product and the process is not so big at very, very thin wire, and this is not so big at very thick wire, because with very thick wire, as you will know, of course, the winding speed is not nearly the, the most relevant parameter. It's other issues that come into play. So technically, it's possible for the whole product range, um, practically, I would say from 0.1 millimeter, maybe 0.2 millimeter, up to three, maybe four millimeter. This is the main range where you would use the gliding property. And that's probably the range where the most transformers yes. and motors are yes. uh, developed. Yeah. So if you are in the part of developing machines, even if it's transformers or e-motors, and you have any questions to those of uh, three speakers, please show up. Raise your hand. That seems not to be the case. So I would like to ask the three speakers just to have a, a last sentence each. So we close up this uh, session. And for user information, if you are developing new products, do not hesitate and contact all three of them because there is some interaction between the products you choose and it's much better to do that in advance to check which combination is the best than afterwards by learning by failures. So everybody, a last word? Well, the last, <laughs> last sentence uh, probably is that you, know, you see our boost numbers there. So I know it's all very specific what, what you're doing and you don't want to share your problem and your experiences and so on with a great audience. So I think it's a, it's a technical discussion we need to have either comp component side or system side. So please be invited to come around, have a talk or talk to us later or send us an email and uh, we will come uh, to, to see you. It's our day-to-day -day business uh, not to sell something from a standard product product portfolio, not just to sell that, but, but really to look at your specific uh, uh, problem or your specific tasks. And hopefully, we, we're all technical guys, so we can advise you on, uh, with our experience on what, what you can do. And coming back to our material with the extra slippery surface, um, it will not bring you an improvement in your current production or in your current uh, motor design, but take it in account if you are going to develop a new generation of motors because all raw materials will increase, so this material will allow you to decrease the size of your motor by having the same electrical efficiency. So see it just as a hint for future development and not if you are now changing the standard material to this material, there is no improvement at once possible. So I only uh, can repeat uh, regarding the uh, process workflow. It's uh, more efficient uh, to make more informations work, more communications work in uh, advance, starting the process. 
uh, then uh, making some uh, modifying after the start of a production because this causes a lot of downtimes and maintenance and uh, it's a hidden costs which are not necessary and it's most, mostly not uh, shown on the quotations of the resins and the mixing plants. Okay, thank you.